Greetings, and welcome to another OutSystems how-to video. In this video, we'll continue our look at grid column types for the OutSystems data grid. And in this video, specifically, we'll look at the grid column advanced widget. Let's get started. In our previous video, we looked at some of the basic column types associated with the data grid widget, including the grid column text widget, the grid column number widget, and the grid column currency widget. The grid column advanced allows you to do some more interesting things, including displaying images in your grid. Let's take a look at how we get that done. Where we left off, we were working with some data from the sample product OutSystem Sample Data DB entity. We had wrapped that logic inside of a REST API to get the products, which includes, helpfully, an image attribute. We then wrap that in a server action that will allow us to get the URL for the endpoint of the REST API. And then we tied that into our grid container by pointing the REST URL property to the server action that will return that URL. That allows us to get data at runtime. We've added several basic column types to our grid. Now let's add a grid column advanced widget to display images in our grid. Before we add the widget itself, I've added a couple of properties to my grid column screen. The local variables here, image ID field and product image URL, both have defaults that make it easier for me to construct the values necessary to get the image out of our entity. I've also added a new screen, product image, and product image's job is simply during the preparation stage to go and query the aggregate for the products, get the product specific to our ID, and download the image binary from that entity. Notice that our download end node in our preparation is going to download an image of productimage.jpg, the MIME type application slash octet stream, and it's marked save to disk. So when we query this URL from within the grid, it'll return the image directly to the grid at the client side. Because the requests are being made from the client side, we have to tell our grid how to get the image as a JavaScript function. And we do that, or one way that we can do that, is using the JavaScript property of the screen. So inside the JavaScript property of the screen, I've added a function that I'm calling product image markup. It's going to receive the ID for the grid, the URL from which to get the image, and the field ID that it's going to get from, or, or as part of the URL for the image. So this function will return an image tag with the source set to our URL, which we'll be getting from the product image URL, and the field ID, which we'll get from the, the image ID field property here, and then set its value to the value that's bound to the grid. So this dollar sign value is actually a property of the grid at runtime. Likewise, the title will be set to the title, which is a client side property of the grid at runtime. Going back to our grid columns screen here, we're going to take our grid container and we'll do a search for grid call. And we have our grid column advanced. And we'll simply drag and drop this onto our grid and set the name of this or the label for this to image. As with our previous video on using some of the column types, we have to set the JSON field. And in this case, we're going to set the JSON field to the image field, or actually we'll set it to the ID field because we want to bind the value of the picture field to the ID, which will then get passed in to get the content. For the content property, the content property is required, and this is what's going to actually call the function dynamically to retrieve the product image at runtime. And so we will set the value of this property to call product image markup, passing it the information about our current grid ID, as well as the product image URL property, which we have here, and the image field ID property here. 
So it's going to pass in the necessary markup and then we'll retrieve the actual image tag with the URL set to point to our product image screen, which will return the actual image at runtime. To make sure that our images display the way we want them, we'll make a couple of quick changes here. I want to set the row height of my grid to 80. That would be 80 pixels. And I'm also at the screen level going to add, or I've added, a simple property here, cell text center, which I'm going to apply to my image just to make sure that the alignment is the way that I want it to. So I'll copy that, go back to my advanced column, and add the extended class cell text center. So let's go ahead and publish this and give it a try. I'll click to open up the application in the browser, switch over to our grid column screen, and we'll see that our images appear as expected in the image column. It's also important to note that the grid column advanced widget is not just about images. You can actually have your function return any markup that you like. So for example, if you wanted to have buttons in, an, in one of your grid cells, we could do that too. Let's take a look at how. So to make the changes necessary for a button rather than an image, there's really only two things that I need to change. I can go to my grid column screen, go to the JavaScript, and change the JavaScript function to one that returns button markup instead. So this is just going to return a simple button. I'm not actually going to have that linked up to anything. But this is just to show you how I can change the markup value. Click OK there. Now I can go to my grid column advanced, and I'm going to change the content property to call the new function instead. So I'll just paste that in there, and this is going to call our simpler function. We'll click Done. Now because I know that my buttons are going to be a little wider than my images, I'm going to set the width property of my new column to 200, and we'll just go ahead and change the label to Button. Now we'll go ahead and do a Publish, and then we can give it a try. Click to open in the browser, switch back over to our column screen, and now you can see we have our buttons instead of our images. And they're fully clickable buttons. As I said, I don't actually have the buttons wired up to anything, but you can see that they're bound to that title property. Again, that's a property at runtime of the grid itself, so you can use that in your content to get the correct value. So that's a quick example of how we can use the Grid Column Advanced widget to support any kind of markup, but particularly images or buttons or whatever kind of markup you might want to have as part of your grid in and out systems data grid. Hope you enjoyed this video, and thanks for watching. I would also encourage you to please subscribe to our OutSystems YouTube channel. We have an advocacy team hints and how-tos playlist that includes videos just like this one.